The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman again. What you can see I'm doing at this particular point, I'm notating. I've already done that many times before, but I seem to have lost the notation. I'll do it again. I'm looking at the XLI. This is the S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund. This is way more uh, accurate in terms of calling it an industrial ETF than the Dow. The Dow is no more an industrial than uh, semiconductors. I mean, although semiconductors are in everything, but it's not your classic uh, industrial. So this here is telling me that the S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund made an all-time high this year. The Dow did not make an all-time high. This did, and it went to, and I have to call it an alternate account, F slash C, with this candle of the 8th of August, uh, this is August of this year, it went to 111.12. So let me just type this in, I'll do it in the weekly chart, 111.12, and that's 8. I'm just going to have to guess at this 8. And let's go to 12. I'll come back and check it in a moment. And look at this, uh, 804. All right, I missed that one. It looked like the first week, but I've typed in the second week, 04. So how about this? So it's at 111, and it's trading right now at 97. So that's some 15 points, 14, 15 points off the high, off the all-time high. And this is really the industrials. And if you look at Caterpillar, look, it's the same thing. Caterpillar made, uh, I think it was August, September, October. Yeah, August also made its all-time high. And let me just double-check. I believe that's an all-time high. Caterpillar, heavy duty. Yep, whoa, whoa. is that an all-time high? Yep. And now it is down. Ugly day today, down almost 2 at 243. Um, it's under the 200-period exponential moving average. And this is the reason why we've remained short from that August 1st high uh, all uh, let me just get this. I'm doing two things at once. The August 1st high in the Dow. And we're, we've remained short. And one of the reasons I'm not going to change that position is we haven't had a VIX index up in the 2832 area. Let me just go to the VIX right now. I'm, this is a little bit unconventional in my usual preamble. But I think it's really important. I've got to go to what is absolutely imperative to monitor right now doesn't mean anything if you, you do it two days later or three days later. It means right now, the Dow, right, this is, this is the top, 35,679, August the 1st. That's where the on-balance volume and a couple of other uh, Chapman Wave tools that I used, I gave a beautiful uh, indication that it could reverse that day. and was really based also on the DOG, which is one-to-one, -one, uh, short the Dow, the, the buy signal. And within that context, I look at the VIX index, V-I-X dot X, am I typing in the right? Yes, I am. VIX index is up $1.05 at 21.24. So it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. Yes, it's gone to a peak D, but in the Chapman Wave methodology, the only thing that I don't really uh, put great import uh, to is the um, the volatility, because that's that's based on uh, many other things, New York uh, Stock Exchange, the futures. Just it's just got to do with things that are emotional, mostly, and and that just says to me you could fail at this peak C massive move to 85.47 in March of 2020. Remember that's what day we actually went long. Um, coronavirus, business, uh, Fed, everything everything was negative on that day. And that was a C, and then it came back down, and it made another peak, A, B, C, before it pulled back uh, since uh, last year, I think it was November. So you can't, 2022, yes, you can't really use that in the same way. No, it was 2021. Let me just give you the exact day. Uh, January of 2022. So that's, we went to a peak C, and now it's only in another A. So those, Chapman Wave methodology doesn't work for the notation 
of the VIX index, everything else it does. Now, here's something very interesting. The um, This is a down channel. It's called the Channel Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. This does work. And you can see how it's worked. Think how many, uh, half a dozen times at least, We've, oh, it's more than that. We've got into this range, didn't break and close above the green line. It went to the pink line and reversed. So I'm anticipating this is kind of the area that we want to see some kind of a, a spike to the upside. And this could happen. Here. Let's just say, look, the Dow is only down 32, but that's because the Dow is starting to look at IBM. Let me just show you something very interesting here. I've been doing about it. I told subscribers to my opening call. I've liked IBM. I think IBM is going to be uh, the turnaround kid, <laughs> kid, it's been around since the 1940s, I think. Um, and, and but it's it's just been a laggard, and I don't know how many decades, not years, but decades, I've heard. Oh, they're getting into this, and they're getting into that, and when they get into ah, oh, and they always make a mistake. Except this time, I believe that they have. Look at the big spike today. It's up five at 142.41. I don't think this is it for the low for. IBM just yet. It needs to do some retesting. 137 is the 200-period moving average in the daily. 133 is the 200-period moving average in the weekly. I think it needs to do some testing, but it's going to be very interesting. Why? Because look, we've got IBM, which is not an industrial, and it used to be in the Dow, and then it got knocked off, it got bounced, and um, actually it got almost bounced but it's still in the Dow, and it's important today. Um, it's up five at 142. That's helping the Dow, otherwise the Dow would be down low. But look at this, Triple M. <clears throat> I don't think Triple M's made as low, but wow, that was a nice three days of a gap up and holding the gap um, because they start to improve some of the things that are going on. And you can go, I don't want to go through them all, but you can go through a lot of these stocks that had really good turnarounds, I mean, GE used to be in the Dow. It was the longest one, the longest living Dow stocks. I think now Honeywell is because it's uh, it, it was there early on. But what we're looking at is um, GE is given back a chunk. And one of the reasons is you see this rectangle formation. Just have a look at this. You don't have to know that this is a weekly chart. You see this sideways, long, narrow rectangle that it takes out the low? Ha. Huh. Charts are charts. I'll show you something very interesting. Look at this. We just saw that this morning. Look, he has the, he has the one minute chart, the E mini, same thing. Toodle, 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 goes sideways, just sneaks above that line. Remember, I use this and I always say there's a mid, you should have a phantom or you can even put it in the mid channel line between the narrow rectangle. And if it takes it out after going sideways for a long time at a peak F or a DEF, even a G, you got to be careful because if it takes it out, it's going to test the left, the low of the rectangle and then probably pierce it and then come back. And if it comes back and then goes above it, you got to be careful because it could repeat the same thing again, which it did. And then it went, failed at that peak G many times. And then what did it do? It took out the rectangle low and kaboom. Well, isn't this the same chart? Let's just go back. Look, it doesn't matter if that's a one minute chart. There is the weak thing. It just did the same thing. So I think GE, which has acted fantastically, um, even though it's really a 10, 100 to 1 or something, 10 to 1 split, uh, is trading right now at 108.49. I think it's due for a little breather. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so just before I go any further, and I actually haven't even done a review yet, uh, I did it for the uh, 10 a.m. Tiger Financial News Network market update, but I haven't done it yet. So yesterday I had a question about UVXY. It was during my show. And the question was, I, I would like to, I would like to get into UVXY, and I said, hold off. Um, and the only reason I said that is because there was such a mixed market. There was such a, uh, you know, the Dow was acting well, the others were not acting all that well, but the Qs were still kind of holding okay. And I just thought for risk reward, I wasn't able to say, yeah, get it right here and put in a whatever stop it is because. The whippiness makes it so difficult. I mean, even today, you know, if you if you thought you'd, you'd want to short the Dow because you thought, uh, yeah, this couldn't last and all that, you probably would have got stopped out because there was a pretty decent rally. Or if you wanted to buy it, you probably would have got stopped out because it was a pretty strong dip. But the H pattern is imperative to monitor. Just as this cup pattern, even though it is the sentiment indicator, the pro shares ultra VIX and that's the ultra VIX, and it's going together with the volatility index direction. So I have to apologize. I should have said, yeah, just start a position. If I wasn't sure, I would have said, start a position, make it a split position, and then give it another number, and you would at least would, would have had one. And I think it is in play, the UVXY. I don't think we're done. I think that there's, just based on the chart patterns that I'm looking at, uh, this uh, interim uh, benefit of the Dow 30, which is not the Dow Industrials, although it's called the Dow Industrials, it's the Dow 30, great mix. I think that's a problem. Uh, just at this particular point, even though it's holding well, but you can't treat it uh, as a uniform sector, it's not. It's a very diverse sector. Probably the most sneeze. Here we go. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. Um, yes. <coughs> Excuse me, sneezer. And it always reminds me of the late Dave White. He used to also have sneezes during his show. Um, so I, as I'm looking at this, yes, this is in play. The UVXY, and I do have to apologize because um, it was there, and I, I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't go for it, uh, just because of the not quite knowing where to put stops in, and that's it. But uh, it, it's worked out well if you actually got it. Next question I got was, and I need to get this right now. So let me just do this 
I'll do this really quickly. So the Dow has still, even with this down 44 today, 32,989, and I think IBM is the one of those that's helping, hasn't taken out the 32,846 low of o October. Oh, that's a street cleaner. Uh, October the uh, fourth, uh, the sixth, and as a result, um, it's fascinating because this is what I've been talking about. The divergences have actually turned out to become uh, synchronized, so that look, the E-mini Dow futures continuous contract made a new low. It went underneath that low. Of the uh, October the both the it was the fourth and the sixth I think it was fourth and the sixth so and that was at uh, thirty three thousand and twenty one today's low is thirty two thousand nine fifty nine so it's accomplished a chunk the stochastic is at thirteen percent the on balance volume is getting a little bit oversold but not enough yet to give me a decent turnaround so it says because. You remember what I did with the Dow? I said the Dow, we've got a sell signal, but I can't go to a sell mode until the nine period moving average crosses negative. And I think that's going to take time. And boy, it took about 11 sessions or something. So the same thing when I say to you, look, the NQ on Friday had flipped to a pink nine period exponential moving average. But the QQQ had not on Friday. Look, it had not. This week, and we've still got a day and a half to go, it's gone pink. And that, because it's a weekly chart, it would be really unusual to do it for just one week, maybe two weeks. But I'm watching this really closely because so far, the, dif the distance, the differential between the green and the nine, period, uh, the nine period moving average, the green line, and the 14, just about to go pink at the end of the week, if it stays this way, um, says to me that eventually they all align. Remember, out of all the indices, the Dow, the S&P, the uh, IWM, the SMHs, and the QQQ, only the QQQ itself, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, Invesco QQQ Trust Series, did not go pink, and then it did. So I'm saying to you, I suspect that the Dow is going to test, and that's going to be a big thing for me. How does it test? Do we have a lousy session today? Uh, it's Thursday, and then a lousy session tomorrow, and then over the weekend, all this bad news, and then Monday, I remember I said there was a possibility we could do it Monday, this past Monday, if the futures didn't have a bounce. Well, they had a bounce, and they just negated that whole thing of a horrible, horrible Monday. But actually, what happens is we're accumulating um, downside momentum, and that's really important to me. So that's the that, that's the doubt. Then the S&P, the question came in, uh, where are we in the notation? So you can see we went to a trough E at 42.16.45, and that was on the third of yep yeah, third of yeah third of October, and then we had the really strong bounce, which went to a peak A, and then a fractional B, and then just a slightly higher C and closed under that and said, whoa, be careful! This is going to be the dreaded H pattern where the, you arch over, and I just need to show new new listeners because I I get messages all the time from people saying, wow. We thought we had one of your techniques down. The next day, you introduce a whole new technique that we hadn't heard of before. Um, so I, I just need to review this. I always look at three core patterns, straight up, straight down, cup formation, arch formation. You can mix them. Yes, one and three, where it goes red because it's straight down, then arches over at a peak A or a B. It fails and takes out that left side low. You can go much lower. In the green, you get this inverted Y, uh, reverse Y pattern. If it takes out the left side high, it can go quite a bit higher. So what do we have here? We have the the dreaded H, and for three days, he has the low 42.16. This is now, so it was one day, two, three. This is the third day underneath that. That's really not a good sign. That just says that the downside momentum hasn't quite fulfilled itself. It might need just a little bit more and you've taken out this key support level in the down channel, um, and the nine period moving average is, is weak. So now the question came in, what is the notation? I have to go to the high of that peak C and say if that's a brand new down mode, this is A, but it has to be F slash A, and I'll type it in here. And the reason I have the alternate count is because you want to know what if, what if I'm wrong? 
That's all. It doesn't say, oh, my God, F is terrible, A is fantastic, or the other way around. Um, it just says, these are, this is the notation. And then G slash B, and you can never get an H. So if it bounces and there's another low, that'll become C. Now, the question always becomes, uh, can you can you make a dreaded H and then have a major turn to the upside? And the answer is, it's happened. And it can happen if... The technicals give you a good buy signal that goes to a buy mode and the price goes back to at least an upside major resistance level. And I would say 42.41 is the nine period exponential moving average pink and very, very strongly down. And the black 40 moving average corresponds to exactly where the 200 period moving average is at 42.71. If there is a close in the next week above 42.73, I think they have made pretty decent turn decent rally, not the rally, but I'll be back in a moment. I hope I'll answer that question, and I'll be back, and we've got other questions to go, because I haven't finished the interesting. We also want to look at gold. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm looking at the question here. Um, I go uh, one step at a time, but before I do look, look, here's that rectangle. Remember the rectangle? Here's your midpoint blue line right in the middle here. So there are a couple of things I don't want to take time now to talk about. It's a pity if it was Technical Friday, I would, but there are just too many questions coming in. The first question is IB, IBRX, was it? IB, IBRX. 
So uh, I said I'd get to gold. I'll just mention the chart is right there, so I may as well just mention it. Gold is down 10 at 1964. My contention has been that gold is the, is the instrument that is bought out of fear, geopolitical fear. The dollar is the currency of respect. It's the currency of recognition. And that means that the dollar is still the, the, the world's great currency at the moment. You know, I don't know how long that's going to last. And that's why it's holding two separate things completely. And that's the reason why the GDX is down sharply, down 58 cents at 28.20. And why we got out of the gold stock that we had. I just, I the way this is more a reflection of fear, geopolitical fear, because if it was really the gold and gold production and all that stuff, oh man, you'd get, you know, Newmont mining, Newmont mining wouldn't be uh, down from uh, going from the 34 to 41 in just uh, eight or nine sessions and then coming down in the same number of sessions to 37, it would have stopped. Uh, gone to 41, pulled back to about 39.50, and then it would have taken out the left side high, which is at 41, and even try to tackle the one that goes to September. It's just not doing that. And that's, you know, I've just chosen you on mining. But we could go to ASA, which is South African Gold Fund. This is not what I would expect. I mean, the weekly chart still looks horrible. So does the monthly. And the daily chart went to a peak D way under the previous peak. Something's not quite right. That's what I'm saying. Pass is one that we had once. Uh, we don't have it anymore. This is a silver stock. I mean, it looks terrible. Look at the weekly chart. Something is not good. Everything is not right in this market. Everything that you look at that is normal is unnormal. Unnormal? Innormal. <laughs> unnormal. Okay. So the question came in IBRX. IBR. Now I can go to the charts. IBRX. Look at that. Move. So IBRX is whatever it is. Immunity, bio, or something. I can't read these things. It's getting a little harder. Maybe it's also age, but I think it's also the background, the little gray, dark gray background with black printing. Uh, for trade station, Immunity Bio Inc. Yeah, so this is a fabulous move. So um, um, Dan said, um, <clears throat> targeting, targeting, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess they had some kind of an approval or some a re, a re acknowledgement of something, but I'm, I don't really care. What I am looking at is th this long wick, this is inverted, cha a very long Chapman Wave Roman candle. This one here, let me just open it up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. You see this candle? See that long wick? You see the tiny little wick at the t at the bottom? Big body, which is more than half, half to more of the long wick at the top this is inverted. Well, that says if it can hold even for just a little longer at two, if it can hold above 1.98 for about another, let me go to the 120 minute chart. Can I, do I have it? I hope I have it. Yes, 120 minute chart. Okay, so that's already 120 minute chart. If we can hold just a little longer, it says, I, I give it to, now it's 10.34 a.m. in the morning, uh, October the uh, 26th. If this can hold, uh, I'm going to go to the 10-minute chart because you're doing, you, you're doing this intraday, so let me just IBRX. Good eye, I must say. Oh, look at the way it's walked, the one-minute chart. Look at that. Peak A, B, C, D, Still holding the nine over the fourteen. Oh, if it can go just a little longer. So this is, uh, it's all flat. So this is either A or B or it's B and C. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, Mister. Yes. So the way I'm looking at it right now, if it even goes just another thirty-five minutes, it has to be more than twenty minutes. About thirty-five minutes. Um, above that level that I was looking at, which is one nine, I'm just making it up 198. It could be within a penny or two. Um, then I think it's going to have a really good chance. Now I can go back to the chart, the daily chart. I think it has a really good chance to test yesterday's high. And the high is too good. High, I must say, Dan, nice pick again. Uh, 222. I used to have a box number 222. Family had the box number 222. Uh, 2.22. And um, yeah, that, that, that's the way I would look at it. It should do that within two bars so that by tomorrow it should have a good chance of trying to hit the 2.22 area. It should go right towards it, right on it, or just above it. That's the way it's looking at it. It just has to go a little longer. Oh, now it's a two. somebody's listening to us. It's now at 2.05. Yeah, 
That's the power of TFNN. And then, so, okay, that's, oh, and the other thing is, always look at the other side. The high that was made yesterday, which is 1.87, if that's taken out before it gets to the top, be careful, because then it stalls. Then it just stalls. That's all that happens. All right, okay, that's that. Next question came in, Nat. Uh, this is Nat is, uh, Peaky wanted to know about Nat, which is Nordic American tanker shipping, and I think he's had this for quite a while. It's just, this gives a fabulous dividend. You remember, this is a stock I spoke about for years. I've spoken about it. The guy, I can't remember, a Norwegian guy, he sounds a little bit like the guy who does the um, uh, Royal Caribbean cru Cruise. Is that it? One of those cruise lines. And you hear him always uh, talking about his, his ships. Um, so way back, I remember as it was moving up like this, and then it just started to come. To, I wish I had it somewhere. I've got it in my files. And I've got the guy, the CEO, saying, it was somewhere around here. And he said, uh, he was talking to Jim Cramer. He said, Jim, Jim uh, um, you know, for every quarter for 56 years, we've been paying a dividend, and we've increased the dividend and all that. And it went from 30-something down to down to the most recent lows of two dollars and nine cents um it's back in play it's back in play and it's doing very well and this is only a leg c to the upside i spoke about this a few days ago when it was there i keep this is, remember in the chapter wave methodology until you make a peak this is called the floating letter so that is still a c i haven't called it a g slash c because everything about it is so strong although on balance forms really close to telling us that we could have a bit of a pullback, not a major sell, just a pull pullback. I like it. And this now is a leg C in the weekly chart. So that's a C right there. Okay. And it's a leg E in the uh, E, or it could be even slash E slash C, but I'm calling it an E for now. Yeah, this is great. Nordic American tanker shipping looking great. Um, had a big move from 425 uh, the 14 period moving average to 466 where it's at right now. Yeah, good. Um, next question came in and I'm going to, so this is not a question. I'm just going to do this because it's a stock that I've followed periodically for years. Never, ever had subscribers own it. And sometimes it's looks fantastic and sometimes it doesn't. And I think it was TTWO. And it wasn't a question for me, but earlier on, and I'm sure that uh, Tommy uh, handled it beautifully in his show. Um, yeah, he says it should be coming back down, and it's at 136, and 134 is the 200 period, period daily support, and 133, and it looks to me like it wants to come down to the 133 level. Yeah, I'll be back. Now it's down 56. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So this is something else in the chapter way that you might want to know. Uh, I had a question here, Basel SH is only in C weekly and A monthly, is that right? So um, this is the SH is the one-to-one -one short, the SPY. And um, Fetch is asking about that. And he is short, he's been short quite a long time now. Um, and let me explain something. As far as the notation is concerned, the monthly chart made a low in January of 2022, where the S&P made its high, of 13.47. And then it rallied strongly, peak A, it pulls back, and then leg B goes to peak B, then it pulls back, then it goes to leg C, and then a peak C. And that peak C is right there, and that was mid, uh, it was October, a year ago, October of 2022, it went to, 1771 and then it arched over when it came back down if it went instead of to 1347 it went to 1346 then this up arrow is totally negated by one penny it means you have to start all over so the question is is this leg a it's a gray a because it's under the previous peak c and then now let me go through i i, I don't actually want to talk about this because if it does happen this is going to be Really ugly. Um, and uh, I had a, just a quick message from someone saying, yeah, yeah, why, why are you confused? You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm not confused at all. I don't know why you get the confused business. We are short. We're short the down. We're short the, 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 uh, the SMHs. Nothing, nothing there that's confusing, right? And remain short. So, um, no, I'm looking at this and I'm saying this is an arch formation. And it'll be a very successful arch formation if it does not take our 1347 in the next, say, two, three bars. That'll be two, three months. But instead, it starts to rise. But it's a gray A, which means you've got to keep counting as if that peak C uh, right there is still active because there would have been a C minus if we went to 1347. In other words, the SH, the inversion of the spy. Let me just show you the spy right here. Uh, the SPY monthly chart went to 498.98, but then this recent rally went to the 450s, and now it's pulling back. So there's always a difference, and the difference one, the difference is kind of interesting because it means that in the inversion of the same chart, it went to test the low of January, but the it didn't test the high. So there's a difference. That's why I'm saying that sometimes when I get the channel wave notation, I've had it where I've got a major sell signal, and yet the diamonds uh, went to the D and the Dow didn't. Usually it's the Dow that does go to a D. But I remember one instance where it was like a peak C1, C2, where it just missed it, acted like a D, but I used the diamonds 
as the uh, inflection point to reverse course of the downside. So in this particular instance, 1347 means that you can go, I'll, I'll expand this as you know what I'm talking about, it's the right side chart, which is always the monthly chart. So that just says to me that, and not only that, I just, I don't know, the reason why it just fascinates us, and for those of us that have done this for just forever, I mean, when I say I've done at least a half a million charts, I, that's probably exaggerating. It's probably more three quarters of a million charts. Um, look, look at this. There's your your Chapman wave. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. I couldn't make this up. This is right here. You're seeing it. There's the high. There's the plumb line. And it comes down and exactly the same number of bars to the upside. It comes down and retests at 13.47, the exact price. But wait a minute. Look where the MACD is here, how strong it is. And look at the stochastic. It's still stronger than it was over there back into January of 2022. So there's a positive divergence in the in the um, inflection. This is the mirror image of the spy. Not exactly a mirror image, but close to a mirror image. And that's the reason why I said, uh-oh. I got to look at this very carefully. Why? Because this can go from a an arch. Let me just make this yeah narrow. It can go from the arch pattern to a cup pattern, and that cup pattern says each high on the left side, as it takes it out, if it gets stronger technically, you can go into this particular pattern. I don't even want to look at this. I don't believe this is going to happen. I'm I'm not the big pessimist. I I know people are talking about the end of the world. I just do not see the end of the world yet. The fact that the Dow is all of a sudden seeing key components having really good moves to the upside means that you've ameliorated some of the deficit that you'd have if 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 Triple M plunged because of earnings disappointment. Now it's saved the day at least for a little while, it gives it a bit of a cushion. So that's the reason why. So that so just to be to be clear, Fletch. Um, I would have to see the SH close decisively above 17.71, the January, um, the January high of this. Uh, uh, this uh, what is it called again? I'll never remember what it's called. It's called the ProShares Trust Short S&P 500. That's the full name. There are, but I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to get a, we're going to get a reversal at a peak A sometime uh, within the next month or so. All right. I hope I got that out of the way, but that was really important. I'm pleased I did that because at 13.47, if it went to 13.46, we would have been correct. That would be a gray A. Why gray? Because the stochastic is still only at 12%. The MACD is good, and the 9 pre moving average is still under the 14. So this way, it's called the gray A only because it's under that peak C, but you haven't started a brand new move to the upside. It's the same move that started in January. All right, we've got that out the way. Next thing I want you to do, okay, now let's go through these things. Um, so I looked at gold, and what I was saying is, this is now down seven. But look at the way gold is holding so well here. So um, if you're holding gold, I think that's a better way to go, just at this particular moment, than the actual, say, the GDX. Not that GDX can't actually start to move higher, but at this particular point, I think it's gold itself. It's not reflective of the panoply of uh, uses that really turn gold and the gold miners into flourishing a business at this point. I think this is this, this could be momentary because what happens if everything just stalls there and it goes into a stalemate, very much like, uh, although with the Israelis, it's hardly likely to go to stalemate. But uh, but like the like the Ukrainian war, um, so I'm just looking at this, and I, I think that just at the moment I'm not. I don't feel that I need to tell subscribers we've got to get into the gold stocks just yet. There was a big move in gold. I mean, 25.62 to 30 in the GDX, and now it's given back. Uh, it hasn't given back half. Let me just do a little fib stuff here. Here we go. Uh, fib 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 price. I'll just grab this high. I'll go to this low right here, just the best way to do it. Um, so, yeah, we're at the 61.8 right as we speak. It went under it, but right as we speak, that's where we are. Let's see what happens there. But the way that the nine period moving average and the weekly and the MACD just deflecting lower 
and the histogram's improving, yet the price hasn't closed positive, and the stochastic's still at 36. This says to me, maybe, maybe just not yet in the GBA. Now look at this, the Dow's up 21, the S is up 10. There. See, this is what I'm saying, this rotational buying, there are buyers, and those buyers are gonna have to be disappointed at some point, and that's when the VIX really spirals to the upside. So I don't think we're done, but it's not an easy process. It's not been a crash to the downside, just been a drip, drip, drip. Lower highs, low lows, lower highs, low lows. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Wow, so I just got a bunch of the questions. So let me, let me just do this. So I've learned over the years, over the thousands and thousands of charts, that when I get to a G on the upside or a G on the downside, at least initially, I have a G slash whatever it is. It's usually a G slash C. In this case, it's a G slash B in the S&P. That's answer to the question. I'm just ready for anything. It's at a G. G is where it often turns, but very often it will turn and then retest and get to that D, or in this case, it will be a C. But look at the G that made in the weekly chart of the S&P. Okay, that was one question. Next question was, I forgot to say, where would you add to Nat? It's so difficult. For instance, we have UEC, and I wanted to add to it uh, for subscribers because uh, it looks so good. Uranium Energy Core, we've had really great profits. We've taken little bits off, but I, I really wanted to add because it's acting. And yet it's very difficult because it's the same sort of thing. So NAT is even stronger to the upside. So what I would do is this, because I'm calling it C, but it could be an alternate count, 
And the on-balance bomb is a little bit overbought. If you want to trade, I know that you do sometimes trade. You like the longer-term positions. I, I don't want to give you something that's going to give you a bit of a loss with not that much of a gain uh, in this particular situation because you've had a good gain. So don't aggravate it. But what I will say is if in leg C, the next move down can get you the 457 level, you can grab some there with a very tight stop and hopefully run it up to leg D in the daily chart. The weekly is still only in leg C. So, uh, or you could split it and take a little nibble here at 467, knowing you could pull back and then add to it. But don't don't mess up your longer term position when it's already at this you know recovery high. It's actually at a multi year high as we speak. Next question is SCO and SCO. This is a good question because this this is the uh, inversion of the uh, pro shares ultra short um, oil. I just be real careful with the whole thing in the middle Middle East. Um, oil's kind of in play, even though it's not actually all that well. I'd be careful. That is a high risk. Hey, this is a Basel Chap, and check out Hope Reform, my daily newsletter. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Stay tuned for Steve. Great program.